In the future, ecological disasters and global conflict collapse modern civilization and cause North America to become the country of Panem. It consists of a federal district called the capital, where the fancy people live, and 13 outlying districts, which are expected to provide economic and material services. The capital behaves cruelly toward the districts, so one day a civil war known as the First Rebellion led by District 13 breaks out. After three years of conflict, the rebellion unfortunately collapses with the destruction of District 13, followed by a time known as the Dark Days. During these days, two upper-class kids are running through the deserted streets as they try to find something to eat. Suddenly they're found by a wild dog, so the boy throws something at it to distract it while they run away. They hide behind a statue and watch how a man starts cutting up a body so he can eat the meat. Afterward the kids return home to their grandmother, who is bad news, the boy's father has been killed by rebels in District 12. Three years later, the dark days are over when the capital creates the Treaty of Treason to ensure peace. Part of the treaty includes annually celebrating the Hunger Games, a brutal competition during which two teens from each district must kill each other. This is to remind the districts that the dark days can't be repeated. Ten years after the treaty is created, the boy Coriolanus lives with his grandmother and the other kid, who is his cousin Tigris. Unfortunately the family status has fallen into decline after losing their factory during the war and now they live in poverty, but they try to keep appearances not to be kicked out of the capital. Coriolanus has been studying hard at the academy in hopes of winning a scholarship for the university, which would save him from having to get a menial job. When the Tenth Hunger Games are about to start, Coriolanus joins the mentor program, which means assisting one of the tributes from the districts. Head game maker Gaul arrives to introduce Dean Casca, the man who created the games and is a serious addict. Since viewership on the games has been going down, Casca wants the mentors to focus on having their tributes entertain the audience rather than win. Now the scholarship prize won't be decided by best grades anymore, it'll be given to the best mentor. Then they watch the reaping ceremony on big screens, showing how a girl and a boy are chosen from each district. As each chosen face appears, Casca assigns them to a student, and Coriolanus is upset to hear he'll get the girl from District 12. It's known that the lower districts are the poorest, so they usually die quickly in the games. The chosen girl happens to be Lucy, who is making her way to the stage and pauses to put a snake down the blouse of Mayfair for making fun of her. When she reaches the stage, the mayor hits her for harming his daughter and the guards known as peacekeepers have to take him away. The public begins singing a song to support Lucy, so she stands up and sings along as a fact of defiance. Everyone laughs when she adds an insult at the end, so Coriolanus starts to see she has potential. Sometime later, all the tributes are brought to the capital by train and Coriolanus welcomes Lucy with a flower to start gaining her trust, but Lucy isn't impressed and eats a petal. Another tribute is causing some trouble and the guards get distracted on a chase, so Coriolanus uses the chance to get in the truck that will take the tributes to their quarters. The group doesn't like seeing a fancy guy and Reaper threatens to kill him, which the others agree with. However Lucy stops them by pointing out they'll be executed if they do so. Suddenly the truck stops and opens the doors to throw the group into a cage. It turns out the tributes are put in a zoo so visitors can look at them as if they were exotic animals. A reporter notices that Coriolanus is among them and asks for an interview, so he comes forward with Lucy to make a good presentation. Lucy charms the children and explains that she isn't originally from District 12, she's from a nomadic group that got stuck in that district after the war. Coriolanus is also very charming to the camera, but soon the peacekeepers come to take him away. Before he leaves, Lucy asks him to get them some food because some of them haven't been fed for days. Later at the academy, Casca scolds Coriolanus for what he did since it's against the rules, but Gaul thinks it was a very smart performance. His best friend Sianus uses the chance to complain about the games being immoral and how they don't see the tributes as people, so Coriolanus comes up with an idea. They should let the public know the tributes before the games, that way they'll care more about watching the show because they'll have someone to root for, maybe they could even start letting people bet on them too. Gaul tells him to make a written proposal for it. After class, Coriolanus and Sianus bring food to the tributes in the zoo. Sianus' tribute Marcus is wary and doesn't accept it, but Lucy does take the offering from Coriolanus. He doesn't like the fact she shares it with others, but they still get to chat and bond. Nearby a tribute is being taunted by her mentor with some water, so she takes the bottle from her and uses it to stab the mentor's throat. Everyone runs away in fear but Coriolanus rushes to her classmate's side, watching her die before the peacemakers take him away and shoot the tribute to death. The next day, Coriolanus hands in his proposal, which includes the idea of viewers being able to send supplies to the tributes via donations. During class, Casca announces that in the evening, there will be a televised presentation of the tributes, so he gives the mentors an hour with them to discuss strategies. Casca wants Lucy to sing to win people over, so she asks him for a guitar. Afterward Coriolanus is called to Gaul's office, and his classmate Clemenzia comes along because they're class partners. Gaul's office is full of mutated animals in jars, and she introduces them to a tank of special rainbow snakes she's been breeding. Clemenzia tries to claim credit for the whole proposal and Gaul reveals it's fallen inside the tank, so she asks her to retrieve it. These snakes won't attack someone if they're used to their smell, but since the paper doesn't have Clemenzia's scent, the snakes bite her as soon as she puts her hand inside. 
While the assistants provide an antidote, Gaul tells Coriolana she approves his proposal. Sometime later, the mentors and the tributes are given 15 minutes inside a huge dome which will be the arena for the games. Suddenly multiple explosions begin blowing up the walls around them and soon the ceiling is destroyed as well, so debris starts falling. Many people get killed while some tributes try to use the chance to escape, but Coriolanus gets trapped under the debris. Thankfully Lucy comes back and frees him as his jacket catches on fire, but then the peacekeepers take her away and Coriolanus faints. He later wakes up in the hospital with Sehanu and Tigris by his side. They explain it was a rebel bombing, which killed four tributes and put a mentor on life support. Marcus has escaped and the peacekeepers are chasing him, but Sehanu thinks he's safer that way. At that moment the tribute presentation starts on TV and Coriolanus gets to see Lucy sing a beautiful song with her guitar, which makes lots of viewers cry. Afterward, Coriolanus goes to the destroyed dome to understand the layout for future plans, and he discovers a few hidden tunnels. When he returns home, he sees a dead rat in the house and realizes the poison they use is pretty strong, so he takes some of it and hides it in his dead mother's compact mirror. Then he goes to the zoo and tells Lucy about all the potential hiding places in the dome and gives her the mirror. He swears he wants her to survive and Lucy cries as she tries to kiss him, but he moves his lips away as he cleans her face with his handkerchief. The next day the remaining tributes are taken to the arena while the mentors gather at the academy with Casca and the show host, who has an envelope with his prediction of the winner. As the peacekeepers push the tributes to their starting spots, they discover Marcus has been caught and is now hanging on the dome as a warning. This causes Sianus to snap, and he calls everyone monsters before leaving the academy. After a countdown, the games finally begin, and the tributes run all over the place. Some of them try to stay safe, but others immediately start attacking each other. While one of his classmates pukes at the sight of so much violence, Coriolanus wishes Lucy would run and hide, but she stays to find Jessup, her fellow District 12 tribute. As players die one by one, their mentors leave the academy in a huff. Lucy does her best to dodge all the incoming attacks and when she sees Jessup she tries to run to him, but she keeps getting her way blocked by attackers. Thankfully she dodges those two and she reaches Jessup, who is looking rather sick because he was beaten by a bat on their way to the capital. Lucy immediately takes him into one of the tunnels, where there are cameras too. Soon more tributes come down to chase after them, so the duo sneaks through a hole in a locked door. A tribute reaches inside to grab Jessup's leg, but at that moment, more tributes show up in the corridor and kill the ones already there, including the one in the hole. Then the attackers consider getting into the hole too, but they're worried Lucy may kill them so they go back to the main area. For a few hours nothing happens as the tributes hide to make a plan, and some people in the academy are even falling asleep while the host starts telling the weather. Suddenly Lamina comes out to check on Marcus, who is still alive and asks for mercy. Using an axe, Lamina kills him, which earns her some donations. Her mentor sends her a bottle of water, but the drone crashes and the bottle breaks in front of her. That night, vultures come down to feed on the bodies in the arena. While Coriolanus watches the screens, Casca comes to tell him he'll do anything to prevent him from winning, so he better act fast. In the tunnel, Lucy finds some running water and tries to give it to Jessup, but he doesn't trust it and turns it down. A few hours later, Coriolanus is suddenly awoken by Gaul, who wants him to do something about Sianus. It turns out he sneaked into the arena to mourn Marcus following the traditions of his district. Gaul refuses to send peacekeepers because it had just proved the rebels right and promises that if Coriolanus does this favor for her, she'll get him the prize. Coriolanus immediately goes into the arena and after dodging a few bodies, he reaches Marcus. He explains that Gaul has cut the feed so nobody is seeing Sianus' gesture, and if someone kills him here Gaul will just tell the public that Sianus died from an illness. Before Sianus can decide, a tribute shows up and starts chasing them. The boys run away but when Sianus trips, the tribute catches up to them. Coriolanus defends himself using some debris and ends up killing the guy. Suddenly more tributes appear behind them, but this time the duo manages to reach the gate just in time. Sianus' parents come to pick him up, and now Coriolanus is on their good side. Afterward Coriolanus goes home and tells Tigris that he had to kill a person, admitting that at first he felt awful but then he felt powerful. The next morning Coriolanus returns to the academy with Tigris as his guest. The host tells everyone that another tribute died while everyone was asleep, but he doesn't share who did it, letting the audience believe it was part of the games. Now only 10 tributes remain. Meanwhile Jessup goes delirious from the bat bite and tries to attack Lucy, who has to run away from him. The chase leads them out of the tunnel and as they begin climbing some debris, the cameras show Jessup's face, which makes Coriolanus realize he has rabies. He asks Jessup's mentor to send him some water, so a drone quickly drops the bottle on him. The glass breaks and startles Jessup, who falls off and instantly dies. Lucy rushes to his side to say goodbye, so the other tributes come out to try to attack her. Thinking fast, Coriolanus sends more water drones to cause a huge mess that keeps the attackers distracted while Lucy escapes with a bottle of her own. Next the group of tributes goes after Lamina, who has been staying safe on top of Marcus' pillar. A fight ensues and even though Lamina tries to defend herself, soon she's killed too. While everyone is distracted by that fight, Lucy sneaks rat poison in her water bottle, then she leaves it for the group while emptying the ones they saved. 
After Lamina's body falls to the ground, Lucy runs away, hiding in the vents and closing the grate right before the others can reach her. Afterward the group argues over the water bottle and a guy gets killed in the process, so seven tributes remain. Then the group goes looking for another victim, so the one that ends up grabbing the bottle is a small innocent girl, who dies as soon as she takes a sip. Her friend Reaper comes out and screams in grief when he sees her while Lucy cries as she feels guilty. Suddenly Reaper begins gathering all the bodies and places the capital flag over them before turning to the camera, ready with a message in favor of rebelling. Unfortunately the transmission is suddenly interrupted by Gaul, who has an important announcement. The mentor who was sent to the hospital by the rebel bombs has died. That kid had been the president's son and his death is a political act, so Gaul will punish the districts by killing all the remaining tributes even if means the games won't have a winner. Because Gaul mentions she'll send a rainbow of destruction, Coriolanus guesses she meant her snakes and gets an idea. While the guards are taking the snake tank out of Gaul's office, he sneaks behind it and throws the handkerchief with Lucy sent inside. In the arena, a tribute finds Lucy in the vent and starts poking a spear through the holes in the grate. Lucy quickly backs away and notices there are other grates right above a pair of tributes, so she throws down the rat poison. As one of the guys breathes it and dies, the other one uses a trident to try to stab Lucy through the vent. She dodges all the hits, but eventually the vent takes too much damage and breaks, causing Lucy to fall. At that moment Gaul's tank arrives and breaks open, releasing thousands of snakes that immediately cover a young girl. Then they start chasing the tributes, killing them one by one. Reaper stays on his knees and accepts his fate while a girl tries to use her last moments to kill Lucy, but the snakes kill her too. Soon they start surrounding her without attacking, and since Lucy starts to sing to them, Coriolanus tells Gaul that the song is calming the animals down and Lucy deserves to be declared the winner. At first Gaul refuses, but soon all the other mentors begin chanting for her victory, so Gaul has no choice but to announce Lucy as the winner. The host tears his envelope, claiming he had voted for Lucy. Moments later Coriolanus is taken to see Casca, who has found the mirror and the handkerchief. This goes against the rules, so Casca announces that Coriolanus' family won't see any prize money and he'll have to work as a peacekeeper in the districts for 20 years. After Coriolanus gets all the proper testing and his head shaved, he's informed he'll be sent to District 8, but he bribes the organizer to be sent to 12 instead. During the train trip, he's shocked to be joined by Sianus, who has volunteered to do this as his punishment so he can start making a real difference. When they make it to District 12, the boys are put through a strict training regime by the peacekeepers. They also have to watch how they execute any person who tries to rebel and take away those who complain, and Coriolanus has to stop Sianus from getting involved. When Coriolanus finally gets a day off, he goes with the other newbies to the local bar, where he finds Lucy singing with her people. The show is interrupted when Lucy's ex Billy appears drunk among the crowd. Apparently he cheated on her with Mayfair, that's why Lucy had done the snake prank. When the crowd tries to stop him, punches are thrown and a fight ensues. Billy gets on the stage to try to reach Lucy, so Coriolanus jumps on him to beat him up. Sianus immediately drags him out of the bar before they could get in trouble. The next day, Coriolanus finds Lucy alone near the woods and they finally kiss. They'll have to keep their relationship hidden, so Lucy tells him about a secret lake where they can meet. From then on, the couple begins spending lots of time together by the lake, bonding and having fun. Coriolanus confesses he wants to go back to the capital one day, but Lucy disagrees, saying they could build a life here. Sometime later, Coriolanus is informed that his test results were exceptional because he's one of the few who can read. Since he's also the son of an important general, he'll be transferred to District 2, where he'll get better pay. Coriolanus can't complain without looking suspicious, and later when he calls home, Tigris tells him they've been evicted because they couldn't pay rent. Coriolanus promises he'll help them after he gets transferred to District 2. On his way to work, Coriolanus sees Sianus speaking to some of the rebels, so when they're alone during bird training, he calls him out on it. Sianus gets angry and explains he's trying to make a difference by helping some people escape from Panem. At that moment Coriolanus remembers the birds they're handling were mutated and can record conversations, so he secretly presses a button to record everything Sianus is saying. Afterward that bird is sent with the others to Gaul's office. One night at the bar, Coriolanus finds Sianus with the rebels, which includes Mayfair and Billy. The rebels have lots of weapons that Sianus didn't know about, and he feels betrayed. The situation is tense and it only gets worse when Lucy joins them, causing Mayfair to get jealous because Billy immediately defends her. Mayfair threatens to tell her father everything. So Coriolanus takes a weapon and shoots her dead. A furious Billy tries to attack Coriolanus for revenge, but another rebel shoots him down. Lucy is having a breakdown, so Coriolanus tells her to go to the stage and keep on singing to keep people distracted. Then Coriolanus asks the rebels to get rid of the weapons and promises Sianus he can always count on him. The next day, the peacekeepers are sent to search the entire district and find the weapons that killed the major's daughter. During his search, Coriolanus finds Lucy, who tells him she wants to leave Panem because everyone suspects her and she'll probably be hanged. Coriolanus decides to leave with her and they agree to meet the next day at dawn. Afterward, the peacekeepers find the rebel who shot Billy and take him to be executed. During the ceremony, the guards also bring Sianus, 
who has been captured after they received orders from Gaul thanks to the birds. Sianus tries to ask Coriolanus for help, but he ignores him and has to watch his best friend be hanged. When Coriolanus returns to their room, he finds a picture among Sianus' things and he finally breaks down. At dawn, Coriolanus and Lucy meet and enter the forest to start making their way out of Ponum. It's quite a long hike and while chatting, Coriolanus accidentally says something that makes Lucy realize he was behind Sianus' death. Eventually it starts raining, but thankfully they find a cabin where they can stay for a while. Under a loose floorboard, Coriolanus finds the rebel's weapons and realizes that if he gets rid of these, there won't be any loose ends. Lucy announces she's going to pick some flowers, but hours pass and she doesn't come back. Coriolanus goes looking for her with a weapon in hand, but Lucy is nowhere to be found. Suddenly he finds her shawl in the woods and tries to pick it up, only to get bitten by a snake. Realizing Lucy has abandoned him, Coriolanus throws a tantrum until he sees someone moving among the trees. He immediately opens fire, but when he approaches the spot there's no body, only Lucy's bracelet. Coriolanus continues to look for her and hears her sing, which causes all the birds in the forest to start singing too. Losing control, Coriolanus begins to wildly fire into the air until he runs out of bullets. When he finally gives up, he throws the weapons into the lake and returns to headquarters. Moments later, Coriolanus gets ready to be transferred to District 2, but his commander tells him there has been a change of plans, he'll be sent back to the capital since he has received a spot at the university as a gift from Sionis' parents. At the capital, Coriolanus immediately gets his family a nice home and new clothes, then he goes to see Casca to drop Sionis' things and thank him for showing him how the real world works. Casca explains that he came up with the idea for the games while he was drinking with his best friend, who was Coriolanus's father. He never planned to present it to the higher-ups, but Coriolanus' father stole the idea and made it happen under both their names. He also explains Lucy's body hasn't been found, so nobody knows if she survived or not. After Coriolanus leaves, Casca takes a drink, only to die because he's been poisoned by Coriolanus. Afterward Coriolanus meets with Gaul to start his training as the new game-maker. Eventually he'll grow into President Snow, the bad guy from Katniss' story.